yes, thank you for joining us. And happy Small Business Week to everyone. 20 years of Small Business Week celebrations in San Francisco. This is the 20th year. So I do welcome you all and thank you for joining. This workshop today is um, on starting a business in San Francisco. And so my name again is Marta Yanez and I'm with the city's Office of Small Business. I'll share a little bit more about what we do um, in the slides as well, but basically we are a city and government agency. Um, we have two offices, one at City Hall, as mentioned previously, and another office over at the new city um, permit center. So uh, we have staff available to help you. If you're looking to start a business in San Francisco specifically, again, we are a city government agency. So our, um, the information that we can provide to you and the resources that we can provide to you are going to be specific for doing business in San Francisco. So with that, I'll go ahead and um, share my screen, my presentation, um, and we'll take questions, I think, towards the end. So there's a lot of information that's going to be covered in this presentation. Uh, we will be sharing the slides afterwards. And um, yeah, so maybe jot, try to jot down your questions um, and we will review those um, at the end. So let me make sure that um, you can see my screen. Am I sharing my screen? Yes, no? Yes, maybe. looks great. Okay. Okay, good. Um, so hopefully um, you'll have to bear with me. I'm not the most tech savvy, so I'm going to try to do as best I can in moving through these slides. Um, okay, so and also I'm going to turn off my um, my video um, so that let me see if I can if I know how to do this. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, so again, this workshop is starting a business in San Francisco <clears throat> um, for Small Business Week 2024. Uh, my name is Marta Yanez. I'm a business case manager with the City Office of Small Business. And again, our main office is over at City Hall. Um, and um, we are, we like to consider ourselves the central uh, point for all small business information and assistance, again, for businesses or people interested in doing uh, business in San Francisco. We are, as I had mentioned, a division of, um, or a government agency, and we are actually a division of the city's Office of Economic and Workforce Development. We are also overseen by a small business commission. Small business commission are small business members or uh, people in the small business community here in San Francisco themselves. So they either own their own small business or somehow work with small business community in San Francisco. They are appointed by the mayor and the board of supervisors. So there's this body of people who meet regularly at City Hall to review um, policy and legislation that's being introduced that might ultimately uh, impact how businesses operate in San Francisco. Uh, so I'd like to inform you that there is a place where you can come and voice your concerns, express your um, interest or um, you know, share your stories with the Small Business Commission. They meet regularly at City Hall um, once a month, usually maybe twice a month. I'll um, give you our website where you can go and find um, the agendas and see kind of what things are being discussed and participate in those conversations that are happening at City Hall that can ultimately impact you as you uh, do begin and run your business in San Francisco. So we're overseen by the Small Business Commission but we are a division of the city's Office of Economic and Workforce Development. Uh, we have, again, like I mentioned before, two locations. Um, one uh, that provides more general business information. That's our city hall office, which is where I'm located. And we have a couple of other uh, case managers that are located there as well. So you can actually walk into our office at city hall or make an appointment or call us and speak to one of us one on one. Um, we'll sit down with you. We'll discuss kind of at what stage you're at with what you're doing and then assist you by providing you information about what will be necessary for you to start your business in San Francisco. Oftentimes, we will refer you to work with partner organizations. Um, maybe you need help developing a business plan. We'll, you know, let you know where you can get some resources for that. And I actually have a slide uh, with some of that information. 
and identify will also help you figure out what type of permits and licenses are required. Uh, we'll discuss with you the business registration process. <clears throat> so that's um, pretty much what we do um, through our office. And then for those of you who might need actual um, permits to operate your business, some types of businesses will require additional operating permits or licenses. We have our permit specialists that are located over at the new permit center, which is at 49 South Venice. So you will work with one of our permit specialists there uh, for permitting for your business. This includes like any building permits if you're constructing, constructing or remodeling, um, but also like health permits if you're a food business, um, sign permits if you need to put up a new sign at your facade. Most of these permits are for businesses that will be opening brick and mortar type businesses. Um, but potentially some others too, but mostly again, it's brick and mortar businesses. So opening up like a storefront. Um, but again, so we like to consider ourselves the city's central point for small business information and assistance. Again, we provide one-on-one -on -one customized business assistance. That's where you'll come in, we'll sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and kind of, you know, have those conversations. Um, what type of business you're looking to start? What have you done so far? Um, to identify like where we need to suggest that you start. And we'll give you a roadmap, a checklist actually um, to help you get started and to identify all the things that you would need to do to start up your business here. Uh, we provide services in English, Spanish, Cantonese, Mandarin, and other languages are, are available also using interpretation services. Um, next slide is again, a little bit more uh, about the specific services that we offer. Um, so again, we provide information about business formation and registration, filing a fictitious business name, operational permits and licenses. We also are particularly our staff over at the permit center can assist you with zoning and land use. So we always say you should never sign a lease before you know for sure the type of business that you want to operate is going to be permitted in that particular space that you're looking at leasing. Um, and so we have staff over at the permit center who can do some of that research for you. They will check in with the planning department who regulates land use to make sure and determine that your particular business is permitted and what the process would be to get you to be able to open up your business in that space. So sometimes if, for example, the prior business that was in that space was not the same type of business that you want to open in that space, you might have to go through a change of use process and you might need building permits to change the use. So our permit specialist over at our permit center office, again, at 49 South Menace, would be able to assist you with all of those um, processes. Um, we also provide information about accessibility considerations when you're opening up a business in San Francisco. You do, especially again, a brick and mortar, an actual storefront, somewhere where the public can come into. You need to be aware that there are laws that regulate um, the accessibility of your business. Your business generally has to be accessible to people with disabilities. So we have information um, we can talk to you about um, some important considerations that you need to be thinking about with respect to that. We have staff again at our permit center who can look up um, permits and see if any work has already been done to make this space more accessible or to uh, help you determine what you might need to do to make the space more accessible to people with disabilities. Um, we also have a grant that I'll, I'll talk about a little bit more later um, to help businesses that need to make their storefronts more accessible. We also provide information about business programs and resources. So again, like grants, if you were to come in and uh, you wanna know whether there's any programs to help you start your business in San Francisco, we would be able to tell you about whatever grant programs are available at the time. Um, we have had a number of different types of grants over the years, um, starting a lot during like the pandemic time, but um, we've kind of continued some of those. Some of them have closed already. Um, so there's not a lot right now, but um, we could talk about that a little bit more. Um, also loans, um, we do have a couple of city loan programs that we can inform you about. And then as mentioned earlier, there is a program out of the treasurer's office called First Year Free, which is currently um, 
waiving a business's initial registration fees, as well as some of the um, operational permits and licenses, um, the initial application and annual license fee. Um, that's a way to kind of get businesses to get um, back started in San Francisco. Um, we also can provide you information about training programs, technical assistance, and legal resources. So ideally, uh, before you start a business, you would want to take some training classes, work on developing your business plan. And um, we do not actually assist with business planning ourselves through our office. What we do is we partner with other organizations that do provide that type of assistance. So we would be able to to um, refer you to those organizations or let you know that there are these organizations that provide business training, um, help with developing a business plan. There's also legal resources that we would connect you to. So that's uh, a little bit of the type of services that our office offers um, is connecting you and informing you about various programs that are available. Uh, to help you as well develop your business. Uh, in addition, um, how to become a city vendor if you're looking to actually work with the city, meaning provide your services um, or products to the city, you would need to become a city vendor. We have information about that. We also in San Francisco have a local business enterprise certification um, where you can get certified as a local business. And um, therefore also maybe have more opportunities to do business with the city. Um, and we provide information about local labor laws and workplace posters as well. So a lot of information um, we provide through our office. So this is some slides about how to contact us or where to find us. Our main um, website is the sf.gov forward slash OSB. And you can, if you go to our website, you'll see um, here on the left hand side, where you could submit a question, um, you can schedule an in person appointment, um, and you can walk in for counseling um, for one on one assistance as well. So we try to make ourselves really accessible to you available, um, both at our city hall office, as well as at our permit um, center office. And so the next um, on the right hand side, you'll see um, our contact and our addresses. Uh, for both of our offices, and again, our website and how to contact us. Um, okay, so that's a little bit about us. The next slides get into the actual um, topic of the presentation, which is uh, starting a business. And so this slide is a quick overview of um, the basic steps that are required to start a business. And so some of this I've already discussed. First and foremost, we want to ensure that you do take the time to work on developing a business plan. We do find that the folks that do take that time to either take some business classes to work on developing a business plan are just ultimately going to be more successful in their business because they're able to really think through their business and plan it out and think about it, you know, the future in the long in the long term. Um, so again, there are resources for that. We do not assist with that directly through our office, but we can connect you to organizations that are available to assist you with that. Um, ideally, these steps would be in this order, although sometimes we have noticed that, um, for instance, somebody might um, have a business plan and then uh, be trying to secure fund financing but um, they will be um, told that they actually need to file a fictitious name in order to apply for a business loan. And so you'll see step seven is the step on filing a fictitious business name. So it, you'll kind of have to see kind of what you're being asked for that will determine you know, what you might need to do. So, but ideally in a perfect world, it would be in this order. You work on creating your business plan, um, selecting a business structure. And so what that means is um, you can organize a business. Well, one of the first decisions that you have to make is, is how to structure your business. And there's different ways that you can structure a business, different reasons that you would um, choose one structure versus another structure generally it has to do with 
how much risk is involved in the business that you're getting into, and um, what do what do your personal assets look like. So the um, general rule of thumb is the riskier the business that you're getting into, and the more that you have to lose. Let's say you have your own personal assets such as a home, and the business that you're getting into is risky, then you might want to consider a more formal type of business structure, which we're going to look at a little bit um, in another slide. Uh, but those are, for those of you who may be familiar with um, LLCs, a limited liability company or a corporation, those two types do provide um, separation between you and your business so that you cannot be held personally liable. And generally, that's the case. Um, so again, if there's risk in the business that you're starting and you have personal assets such as your own home, then you might want to consider a corporation or an LLC as your business structure. The reason that it is important to determine this up front is that the steps um, will then be determined, like what you need to do first will be determined by that um, decision. So for instance, if you do choose to do an LLC or a corporation, you first have to establish that entity by filing paperwork with the California Secretary of State. So step four on here, I'm gonna skip um, step three, secure financing for a little bit. Step four here then says, you know, file your articles of organization or articles of incorporation if applicable. So that applies again for those of you who might be uh, wanting to organize a, uh, an LLC, limited liability company, or a corporation. Um, and then the next step after that is that it, you would need to obtain your employer identification number. That is a number that operates like a social for a corporation and an LLC. So for individuals, if you decide you don't need a corporation or an LLC, then another um, business structure option is something called a sole proprietor or a sole proprietorship. That is a business that's owned by you, the individual, where there is no separation between you and your business. So you're personally liable. In that case, you're using your legal name as the owner of the business and your social security number or individual taxpayer ID number as the your tax number for your business. Um, so when it says, you know, obtain an employer identification number or EIN if applicable, that's that's because it depends on what business structure you're choosing. So again, business structure is one of your first decisions. Um, you'll also want to work on securing financing. And number three, there's organizations, again, that we can refer you to for help um, with business loans um, or even um, for help packaging a business loan um, and shopping that around for you. Uh, but generally, again, these, this is the order of things. So again, if you do uh, decide to incorporate, form a corporation or, or an LLC, and ultimately that decision should be made by consulting with a business lawyer and a tax professional. We That's another thing that we don't provide um, much guidance on through our office. We're not lawyers and we're not tax professionals. So we really do encourage people um, who are considering an LLC or a corporation to really discuss that and talk it over with a business lawyer and a tax professional to determine whether that's necessary. And I say that because corporations and LLCs are a legal type of entity structure. So there's more formalities with having that type of a structure. There's gonna be uh, more taxes potentially that are uh, gonna need to be filed, definitely more paperwork that's gonna need to be filed. Uh, there's an $800 minimum annual tax, for example, for having a corporation or an LLC. And um, it's really important for you to really understand what it means to have an LLC and a corporation going forward. We have seen that a lot of times uh, people who have formed LLCs and corporations haven't maintained their um, filings and so have fallen out of good standing are delinquent with the state, owe that tax. And so um, sometimes it's a lot to manage, especially if you're just getting started and it might not always be necessary. You might be able to operate just as a sole proprietor, but again, ultimately it is something that we encourage you to discuss with a business lawyer and a tax professional. Um, and they'll you know review with you the type of business that you wanna do, that you wanna start, you know, they'll assess, you know, how risky it is and um, they'll look at your personal financial situation to determine whether it makes sense 
um, for you to do it as a sole proprietor or whether you should do it as a corporation or an LLC. Um, but basically, the next step is to register your business in San Francisco. And we're going to go over this a little bit more. Um, then you might need to file a fictitious business name. This is generally required if you're going to be doing business under a different name than the owner name. So keep in mind that when you have a corporation or an LLC, the, you have to create that legal entity. And at that point, you're going to have to come up with a name for that legal entity. Um, LLCs typically have an LLC ending and corporations, oftentimes you'll see them with an ink at the end, although it's not required. But that name that you give that entity is the legal name of that entity. And if you do business under any other name besides the full name of that entity, then it's considered fictitious. Or if you choose to uh, register as a sole proprietor, it would be that your legal name. So if you're putting yourself out there to the world under some other name, it's not the legal name of the, either the entity or your legal name, then you are considered um, doing business under a different name, and therefore you would have to file a fictitious business name statement. Uh, but you can only file the fictitious business name statement after you first register your business. So again, the order of things is in this order. If you are going to file a corporation or LLC, your first step is to create that entity. So you would need to do step four before doing step five, before doing step six, before doing step seven, etc. And then for those of you, depending on the type of business that you're doing, some business will have additional permits and licenses that may be required. And so you might need to obtain those permits and licenses. Again, we can help you identify that and um, tell you where you need to go to apply for any additional permits and licenses that might be required um, based or depending on the type of business that you do. Um, and then staying compliant. So let's move forward. That was kind of a lot. I know um, it is a lot of information. What I do want to say uh, maybe before going forward is at any point um, after this uh, presentation, feel free to reach out to us directly schedule that one-on-one, -on -one, come in and sit down with us and we can go over your specific situation. Um, you can talk to one of our case managers one-on-one -on -one, and we'll happy to review all of this with you again. Um, <clears throat> so here are some resources for writing a business plan. Again, it is a really helpful tool for you to have. Um, it's a good exercise for you to do to really think through your business. Um, a lot of times people, you know, will think, oh, I want to open a cafe. Um, we get a lot of uh, people wanting to do food businesses, but they are also honestly some of the most difficult types of businesses to start. They just require a lot of permitting. And so um, you do want to make sure that you really uh, look at, you know, how much money you might need to have to open up this type of business. What will your expenses be? Because now you're talking about rent and you're talking about utilities. You're talking about paying employees um, and all of your uh, expenses. Obviously, you're, you know, paying for the food that's going to be made and sold. And so there is really a lot to consider. And we really want you to, um, to do the exercise and to take the steps to really develop a, a business plan, which includes a financial plan and a marketing plan. Um, so these are some organizations that do provide some of that assistance. Um, there's more, but these are um, some of our main ones. Um, Renaissance, the rentcenter.org. They have a 14 week business planning class that you could take if you do have the time to commit to something like that. Otherwise, um, like the SBA and SCORE, SBA, I believe, has some templates on their website for business planning, writing, um, a score. You can get access to a mentor through them um, that will work with you one on one um, and also help you develop a business plan. And Meta also has some business planning classes. And then obviously at the library, there's a lot of uh, resources there. So definitely um, take advantage of those. This next slide. Um, is um, information on choosing resources for choosing a business structure. Here we have um, a few, uh, three legal organizations that we refer people to um, that provide free or low cost legal services. So the first one, Legal Services for Entrepreneurs. 
They provide free legal uh, resources and assistance um, if you qualify based on income. So they will have an application that you will need to fill out on their website. But um, they also offer monthly clinics, virtual clinics, where you can get 60 minutes with a lawyer to review some of this. And so um, on the right-hand side, you will see this entity comparison table. So as I was talking about, you know, one of the first decisions that you have to make is choosing a business structure for your business. Here you will see some of the more common business structures, um, starting with the uh, the one on the left, sole proprietorship. And hopefully you can read this. I know it's a little bit small, um, but it has some characteristics for each of these. And you can kind of review to kind of get a sense of the difference between them. <clears throat> um, the main difference is the sole proprietorship and a general partnership um, are basically a type of structure where there is no separation between you and your business. So you are personally liable. Um, Whereas the corporations and the LLC, you provide you're provided that separation between you and your business so that you're not personally liable. So that generally, if there is a lawsuit or something, they generally cannot go after your personal assets if you have corporations or LLCs. But it's actually not as simple as that. Also, once you have an LLC or a corporation, you need to make sure that you are managing it in a way where you do keep that separation because once you start maybe not managing it well and you're commingling things then some of that protection goes out the door and so that's why it's really important i believe to consult with a, a lawyer and a tax professional so you really understand um how to manage those types of legal entities in a way that does keep you from you know basically keep you're looking for. Um, the Bar Association of San Francisco also provides um, a service where I believe you can get 30 minutes for $35 with the lawyer and then otherwise it's a lawyer referral service that they offer. And then the San Francisco Community Business Law Center. And again, when I send out these slides, um, you'll be able to click on these links and, and visit their websites directly. Otherwise, you can also just Google them and find their websites. Um, the San Francisco Business, the Community Business Law Center has also virtual clinics that you can take them for free where they do discuss this and they go over the different types of business structures. Um, um, and then the SBA also has some information about these, the difference between these structures, um, a little bit more guidance as well. So again, that is one of the first decisions you will make. Um, whoops, excuse me. Okay. So again, a little bit more about like what we'll do when you come into our office. We will um, sit with you and we'll have a checklist that we kind of mark up for you based on our conversation with you and ultimately, you know, what you're doing, uh, what type of business you're starting. We'll identify what you need to do first, um, where you can do that. We also do assist with some of these filings in-house. Um, and so you'll see here um, on the left, the register, uh, where if you're going with a corporation or an LLC, you need to establish that first by filing paperwork with the California Secretary of State. You could do that online. Um, and then next would be to obtain your uh, employer number that's through the IRS. You could do it through their uh, website directly. It's free on their website um, and immediate. Uh, I'll give you a little bit more details on these in a minute. Um, and then you would register your company with San Francisco. Um, the difference is that if you choose to operate as a sole proprietor, you can begin right with San Francisco. You don't have to do anything with California or you don't need an EIN number unless you're going to be a sole proprietor who has employees. Then you will need an EIN number as well. Um, but otherwise, you would uh, register with San Francisco. If you do business under a different name, you would then uh, file the fictitious business name statement with the county clerk. One thing that I like to note with that is uh, we oftentimes have people who are not 
30 days in San Francisco, uh, but do business in San Francisco, so they might need to register their business in San Francisco. But um, the petition's name might need to be filed in the county where they have their principal place of business. Um, and I'll provide some examples in a little bit about that. Um, and then we will, um, we have over here on the right-hand side, the check your zoning. Um, if you're, again, looking to rent or your your business type is the type that you, where you're going to need to rent commercial property for your business to operate your business out of, um, definitely you'll need to check with the zoning before you sign a lease. You never, ever, ever want to sign a lease or um, buy a business, even if it's an existing business and you're going to just take over that same type of business. You never know under what conditions people were operating. Um, sometimes we have had cases where a restaurant might have been operating for 10 years but was never permitted. I know it's hard to believe, but we have seen that. And so uh, you never want to assume anything and you should always check with the city. Um, don't get to work by either the business owner or even the property owner. Um, you'll want to know for sure from the city whether what what you're trying to do in that space is going to be permitted and and what does that process look like. Um, sometimes it can be, uh, you know, an extensive permit process, and all of this is for you to really do your due diligence and really understand what you might have to undertake. Maybe how many months rent you might have to um, try to see if you can get you know, without paying for your rent for a few months while you go through this building process, for example. Um, so it's, it's important for you to do your research so that you kind of, ha um, you know, are informed. And therefore, if you are having to negotiate the lease or when it's time to negotiate the lease, you know, this process is going to be a three-month process. So let me ask if I can get four months free rent or something like that. Um, it's all about being informed. So checking zoning, and then again, we'll provide you information. Sometimes there's additional permits and licenses. So for instance, if you are opening up a restaurant where you're going to sell alcohol, there's going to be um, a license from the state. Um, there's also going to be a food permit from our local department. Um, and then you would also need a California seller's permit. So we will identify what additional permits and licenses you would need and the process to go about obtaining those. Um, what's good right now, again, with the first year free program is that a lot of those uh, permits, except the state one, so the alcohol license, that's a state license, but your health permit from San Francisco, that would be waived at this point if you qualify um, under that program. Generally, it has to be a new uh, business or um, another location of an existing business in order to qualify for first year free. There will be the uh, application fee for the health department, for example, and the annual license fee for the health department. Um, so that's just as an example. Um, let's see here, file permits. We will connect you with, again, our permit specialist to work with you on filing those permits, if, especially if you're needing to remodel um, or change the use or provide new signage, um, add entertainment or anything like that, uh, food permits, all of that requires uh, additional permitting through our, our, some of our city departments and agencies and our permit specialists would help you with that. Understanding your lease, we also now have a commercial leasing manager who can actually review a lease for you um, and help you with a letter of intent. Uh, so definitely take advantage of our services. Again, a commercial, commercial leasing manager who can potentially also help you find um, a commercial space for your business and again, review leases and help you with LOIs. Um, and then again, we do have our permit specialists who can also help you understand accessibility laws and uh, review um, a particular space with you to determine um, what you might need to do to make it more accessible to people with disabilities. Um, and let's see, moving along, I think the next step, uh, sorry, give me a second. Okay, so, here we get into, uh, for those of you who, you know, hopefully you've, again, consulted with a lawyer 
and or a tax professional, usually a CPA, not just a notary. Unfortunately, um, a CPA is a better person for you to speak to uh, when it comes to taxes. Um, so a CPA and a business lawyer, hopefully if you consulted with them to try to um, assess what is the best business structure for your business. If they determine or you guys determine together that um, LLC is the best business structure for your business, then uh, again, you would start by creating that LLC. And LLC, you need to think of it almost like, and you might have heard of corporations referred to as people. I do like to um, put it in those terms because you are creating the separate legal entity separate from yourself. It is going to have its own legal name and it is going to have its own tax ID number. And so um, the first step in, in both of these is um, filing something with the state. Well, actually, even before that, you'll want to work with the business lawyers to create. So LLCs will have something called an LLC operating agreement and corporations have uh, bylaws, corporate bylaws. This, these are documents that stay with the owners. They don't necessarily need to be filed with the state, but it is important for um, to have these documents, um, particularly if you're a multi-member LLC, which means that there's two or more members. Uh, members are owners of an LLC. You want to definitely have an operating, a written operating agreement. It's a document that kind of dictates or states out how the LLC will be managed and operated and run. Uh, if one uh, member wants out of the LLC, what does that process look like? If you want to bring in other members to the LLC, what does that process look like? Um, so it's best to have uh, an LLC operating agreement, again, doesn't need to be filed with the state, but definitely something that you want to have. Uh, you can get um, information about what an LLC operating agreement is, either online. Uh, there's a lot of information, but ultimately the lawyers are the best to help you with the LLC operating agreement and your corporate bylaws. So I do encourage you to kind of do research, like what is an LLC operating agreement or a multi-member operating agreement, you can even get samples or drafts online for you to kind of just see what it looks like and what's in it. But ultimately, um, to get help drafting one, we do encourage you um, to do those free legal resources. And the same with the corporate bylaws. So, but basically the first step in creating an LLC or corporation is that you would have to file for the LLC. They're called Articles of Organization. The current filing fee is $70 um, if you file yourself directly with the California Secretary of State. And there you will see the website where you can go on to do that filing. You will have to create a login with the California Secretary of State in order to file that document. It's basically um, an online application where you provide information about um, who you are, your contact information, the members, um, and then within 90 days, uh, basically what will happen is once you file that, pay your $70, it usually takes about a week or two weeks. Uh, the timing fluctuates depending on how many applications are being received by the state. So they do have information on their website about processing times as well that you can look up. But generally, it's about eight to 10 days. Um, that's what it's been so far uh, lately. Uh, we have seen it as month as as long as two months. Um, several years ago, so it can fluctuate. So maybe take a look at that. But once you file the statement, um, I'm sorry, the articles of organization, you'll wait to hear back from the state. Again, it could take a couple weeks. They'll email you and they'll tell you your articles have been filed. Once your articles have been filed, then you could proceed to the next steps, which is um, to go back online to the Secretary of State website and file this LLC statement of information. That is something that is required to be filed every other year for LLCs, and that's another $20. It's just another online form that you fill out. This is where you tell the state what type of business, and you also um, reaffirm who the, I think, the members are. You also need to provide information about um, <clears throat> who the agent for service of process is. That's typically a person who can receive paperwork in cases. Um, 
lawsuit against the LLC and similar processes again for the corporation. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, corporations and LLCs do pay an annual $800 tax minimum to the franchise tax board simply for existing. So whether you do any business or not, the simple fact that you have created an LLC or a corporation means that you will be on the hook for this $800. Um, this is where we see a lot of people that have not paid this, um, people who have created LLCs in the last few years um, didn't weren't aware of this. Sometimes even the statement of information, we see a lot of times that people have created their articles but never continued with the process of filing their statement of information. These Both of these, the lack of filing a statement of information and the lack of paying your annual tax can be causes for the state to terminate or um, suspend your entity. And um, you would still be on the hook for those whether or not, like I said, you've done business or not. So again, thinking about what type of structure, um, it may not be necessary to do something as formal as an LLC or corporation. Um, so, oh, and then there is a new requirement as of this year that um, corporations and LLCs have to report to the federal crimes, I forget what the name is, it's called FinCEN, um, about who the owners of these entities are. It's called the Beneficial Ownership Information Reporting, B-O-I-R. And um, you'll go to that link to file that. So corporations and LLCs that organized as of this year, January 1st, 2024, have 90 days from the date that they organize their entity to do this BOIR reporting. Uh, corporations and LLCs that had existed prior to January 1st of this year have the rest of this year, uh, by the end of this year or before the end of this year, they have to do that BOIR reporting. Very important. Um, you don't want to not do that. There are some hefty fines we just realized um, so you can go right to that website and, and do that reporting there. Um, next step, let's see. So for those of you, again, doing LLCs and corporations, you would do that. This is where you would create your, um, file your LLC or corporation. Again, it's through the Secretary of State. They have this BIS file online. Um, you would have to, again, create a, a login here. And this is the information that is generally needed to file for their online for the LLC on the left and for the corporation on the right. Again, you will need your um, LLC name. Um, and the LLCs usually do have an LLC identifier at the end, which can either be LLC, as you see it here, or spelled out limited liability company, or um L period, L period, C period. You'll see it in very many ways, um, but that is required for the LLC name is that it has to have that LLC ending at the end of it. There is a place on um, this website. When you click on this website, there's gonna be a search button on the left-hand side. We do encourage you to first search for the name that you want to give your entity. Using that search field, you do not want to uh, file paperwork for an LLC uh, for a name that's already being used. Um, so we actually uh, recommend that you check a, a few different sources, but it's very important that on this website you search first. Um, some people uh, will have um, filed or reserved a name. It's not necessary to reserve a name. And actually, if you reserve a name, you might have trouble filing the name later. So um, typically, as long as you do that search on this site for the name, um, and if it doesn't come up, then you should be okay moving forward with that name for your LLC. Um, so you will need a name. Corporation name um, can include Inc. or it doesn't have to include Inc. Um, or it can include Incorporated, uh, but again, doesn't have to. Um, but same thing, you'll want to search for the name before you file the, the paperwork. And you will need an, an address, cannot be a P.O. box. Um, you also will need that agent for service of process. That's typically an individual for a lot of small businesses who, as long as they're a California resident, um, they can serve as the agent for service of process. Oftentimes, it's the same 
owner. So if you are filing an LLC, single member, it could be yourself. Um, sometimes people will use companies to provide this service for them. That's a fee that you would have to pay that company to provide that service for you. Um, and then you will have to know for an LLC, your management management structure, whether it's going to be managed by one manager, more than one manager, or all LLC members. I, I would encourage you to maybe look, um, do some research as to what would be best for you. You can Google this, but ultimately, again, something to maybe discuss with the business lawyers or tax professionals as well. And then for a corporation, you will need to um, know the total number of shares the corporation is authorized to issue. So again, this is definitely something you'll want to discuss with a tax professional lawyer. After you've created your entity, then again, um, usually the, the step is you, you file that original articles of organization, wait for your articles again to be filed. Then you'll go back into the Secretary of State website and file the statement of information. And right after you do that, you can literally go onto this IRS website and obtain or apply for your EIN number. This is basically immediately, you'll fill out the form. And if you say you want to receive the letter um, online, it'll give you the letter with the number already on there. Um, so there's uh, no reason to do this before you create your entity. It should be, again, the order should be your entity exists and then it gets a tax ID number. Similarly to how us individuals, we need to exist before we can get a social security number. Um, that's a way to really think about it. Um, so you, for the employer identification number, you would go on to irs.gov and in the search field, you just type in EIN You'll, um, it'll show you a, another little section there that says apply for employer identification number, EIN online. You'll click there again, and then you'll need to click again where it says apply online now. If for some reason you go through this application and at the end it's charging you, it means somehow you've been misrouted to another site. Um, you would just want to exit out of that and go back here, and it, you should not be charged. This is free any instant. Um, and here's a little note again that sole proprietors with no employees do not need an EIN. They use their social. So that's EIN. Once you have your EIN, then you are ready to register. Uh, and so um, for those of you who might not be thinking about LLC or corporation, you're just going to do a sole proprietor, then you would begin here or general partners, um, if there's two or more of you, but again, um, you're both, uh, you're not necessarily interested in forming a corporation or an LLC, then your first step in the case of a general partnership would be to get the EIN number first, and then you would register with San Francisco. So um, a little bit about San Francisco business registration. Basically, this is required of any person or entity engaging in business within the city for um, any part of seven or more days per year. Um, so this includes, you know, not only people who are based here in San Francisco, maybe they have a home office and they're doing consulting out of their home office, or they have an e-commerce business selling t-shirts um, out of their home. Well, not out of their home because you can't have people come into your home to purchase from you, but you're selling online, or you're gonna be shipping something, uh, but all of this is being managed from your home. As long as you're residing in San Francisco, then that means you need to be registered with San Francisco. But it also applies to people coming into the city to do business here that aren't based here. So I mentioned this a little bit before, and I was going to give you some examples. One example is if you are a catering company and you're based out of Oakland, but you do events in San Francisco, you're out here serving food at events, parties, et cetera, then um, you would need to be registered in San Francisco in addition to whatever permitting is required of you from your home city, in this case, Oakland, or you're a construction company, you're a roofing company, you're working on roofs in San Francisco, but you're based in San Jose. So you still need to be registered with San Francisco, even though you're based in San Jose, because you're physically in San Francisco doing business. Um, and generally, again, the general rule of thumb is seven, any part of seven or more days a year, um, you are required to register with San Francisco. 
Um, and also another example that I like to give is companies that might be based in, you might have a company that's based in New York, but they have an employee working for that company out of the residence, the W-2 employee, as opposed to an independent contract employee, then um, my understanding is that that New York-based company with that W-2 employee operating from their residence in San Francisco would need to be registered in San Francisco as well. So not the employee, but the company. And again, um, if you guys have questions, we'll, we'll get um, at that at the end, but that's just to give you an example of who needs to be registered in San Francisco. Uh, one thing to know also with the city, we operate on a fiscal calendar. So our year runs from July 1st through June 30th. So if you are needing to register right now, we are at the um, tail end of our year. You would still be uh, charged a fee for our current year, which ends June 30th. And at this point, they are also charging for the upcoming year. So if you're registering between now and June 30th, you're going to be paying for two years. The only way to avoid paying for two years is you would have to wait and begin your business in the new fiscal year, which begins July 1st. So some of you that you can maybe do that, you can maybe wait. Others of you might not be able to wait. Um, so you would uh, just know that when you fill out the business registration application and comes time to pay the fee, you are going to see two years fees that are required to be paid. Um, and let's see, yeah, business registration are generally valid for one year. Businesses registering after the beginning of the fiscal year, the registration is only valid from the date of registration to June 30th and must be renewed annually by May 31st. Yeah, our renewal period is always in May. So people who have been already in business and registered with the city are receiving notices this month to renew their registration. And the notice it tells them to go online, answer some questions and complete the renewal. Um, so it's always in May, you will renew every year in May. Um, or you would have to close your business account officially. Uh, we don't, you can't just assume or you can't just decide, oh, I'm not going to renew. You would officially need to close your business if you're no longer doing business in San Francisco. Let's see, phased or, uh, fees are based on the start date of the business, um, activities and estimated gross receipts. And I see that we're kind of running out of time here. So I'm sorry to kind of rush through this a little bit, but um, business registration is not a permit or a license. Uh, a lot of people refer to this as a business license. For all intents and purposes it is, but um, just know that depending on the type of business activities, there might be additional permits and licenses that are required. Um, and so this is information about registering your business with San Francisco. This is where you would go to do it. Uh, you'll see when you're there uh, a button that says new business registration application. You'll need to complete the application, which will ask you information about, um, you know, the business owner. If it's an individual, you will put the person's name um, on the very first part of the application. If it's an LLC or corporation, you will put the LLC or corporation's name um, there with the tax ID number. Otherwise, again, individual or general partners, put the individual's name with um, the individual social security number or if it's a partnership, then the EIN number. Uh, you'll want to research the name of the business for those of you who might be doing business under a different name. You'll want to research the name before you uh, note that name on the business registration application. And here on the right, there's three links um, or three places that we suggest that you search for the name of the business before completing this registration. There is going to be a section on this registration that asks you to insert the business name that you're going to be doing uh, or that you're going to be using. There's some questions about taxes and fees on this registration application. Most of those generally do not apply to most small businesses, uh, but the, the process is you complete the application, you submit it, then you're going to get a DocuSign email for you to sign the application. You have to sign the application and submit that, and then you will receive a payment email where you have to pay the registration fee, and then you'll receive the certificate in the mail. Again, sorry to go a little bit fast. I didn't realize we were running out of time. Um, this slide is a little bit uh, information about our business taxes. Most of our small businesses will be exempt from San Francisco's business tax. 
Our tax is generally a gross receipts tax, and you have to gross over $2,190,000 uh, $2 to be subject to the gross receipts tax. Um, some businesses may pay a business property tax. This is if you have, um, generally, if you have equipment or um, furniture fixtures valued at over $4,000, you may pay a tax on the value of that property. Uh, the tax rate is currently 1.179%. And then sometimes there's some third party taxes. Um, filing a fictitious name, hey, for those of you who are going to be doing business under a different name, this would be the next step. You cannot file the fictitious name unless you're first registered with the business and that name appears on your business registration. So once you have done that, you would um, go on this uh, website and Download the form. This has to be done in person or by mail. Um, the fee is $63. That's for one person doing business under one name. And then there is also a requirement that you have to publish the name in a newspaper and file proof um, of that publication. So again, we're gonna send these out and you'll be able to click on these links. Um, and then again, just contact us for information about permits and licenses. Um, here's a slide that shows our uh, contact also for signing a lease and the person who can help you review the lease. Uh, let's see, information about accessibility. We do have a grant, as I mentioned, about uh, for people that need to make improvements to their storefront, um, up to $10,000 for making improvements to your storefront. Um, and then our contact information. And I think that's it. And I'm so sorry to run over. I'm going to stop sharing and maybe, I don't know if people are still here and we have time, happy to stay on and take some questions. Thank you so much, Martha. That was very comprehensive. Um, and no worries about the time. We did have a few questions that came in through the chat. Um, I otherwise stayed up to date with putting all the resources in the chat, but a few okay. questions that are best answered by you, Martha. Sure. Um, so someone asked they if, that they have a business abroad, but they are interested in establishing a branch in San Francisco. Does that count as a new business in San Francisco? Yes, my understanding is that would count as a new business in San Francisco. And depending on how they're registered, they might also still need to file with our Secretary of State in California before registering locally. But again, that's something that they'll want to consult maybe with their tax professional or lawyer in terms of how they want to um, organize in the states or in California. Yeah. Thank you. And we have another question. If I have a sole proprietorship and a new LLC uses my name, is that a problem for me? Um. A new LLC that's not related, like it's not your LLC, it's just another LLC, or yeah, correct. I just, um, well, that's a good question. I mean, ultimately, I think this is something that you'll want to discuss with a business lawyer. But generally, yeah, we usually tell people you'll want to, you know, do your due diligence and make sure that you're not infringing on somebody else's name. Though filing of a fictitious name doesn't really give you the rights to the name. Um, what gives you more rights is filing a trademark or a, um, yeah, a trademark with the U.S. Uh, Patent and Trademark Office. Though I think there has been cases where if they end up in court, if you have can prove that you've been using the same for multiple years, then you might still be given like rights to that name. But ultimately, it's something that you'll want to discuss with the, with the tax, I mean, with the lawyer about, yeah. Thank you, Martha. It looks like we have two other questions, but folks, please feel free to put other questions in the chat if you have them. Which needs to be filed first, the San Francisco business registration or a business license slash permit? Um, so, yeah, when people talk about a business license, they're typically referring to the business registration. But um, if their business is a business that's going to need actual operational permits like health permits, let's say, then what needs to be done first is the business registration. Um, so you can't apply for business permits with the city, um, like a health permit or a fire permit or an entertainment permit, um, anything like that 
if you're not first registered. So business registration first and then other permits. Great, thank you. Martha, do you know of any grants available for aspiring small business owners that are low income? Um, so the grants that we have available right now are going to be specifically for storefronts. So people that are um, have a storefront um, or maybe opening up a storefront. And uh, the one that we have is a $10,000 grant for um, a business with a storefront that might be needing to purchase equipment or furniture for their store or do improvements, um, remodeling where they're uh, spending on construction material. They can get reimbursed up to ten thousand dollars for expenses such as those for their for their store, um, and then we have the accessibility grant, which is another ten thousand dollar grant that um, provides uh, also reimburse if you're needing to uh, spend money to make your space more accessible. But again, that again applies to a storefront. There is also a vandalism grant. Um, for uh, again, storefronts. Pretty much everything right now is from the city at least is focused on stores and um, getting people to open up back stores or to help the stores that have been um, the storefront businesses that have been um, already operating. So that's our focus right now. Thank you, Martha. Sylvia asks, I am currently an event planner getting paid from Eventbrite. Sylvia is going to start matchmaking services. Should she create an LLC or just get business insurance? Oh, yeah, that's really um, a question that we don't answer through our office. We really encourage you to talk it over with a business lawyer um, and a tax professional so that you can have the conversations about, you know, your specific situation. Sometimes business insurance does can offset some of that risk and that might be sufficient, but we're not able to tell you that it's better to talk it over with the business lawyer and or your tax professional. Thank you, Martha. And we'll close out with one last question from Cody. So outside of grants that the city of San Francisco is offering, where can a business owner look for to see grant opportunities? Um, that's a good question. So uh, for profit, if you're a for-profit business, um, I would say subscribe to our newsletter. We have had other non-city grants sometimes that we've shared particularly during the pandemic i think verizon had a grant and there was maybe another um corporation that had a grant for businesses that we shared via our newsletter um otherwise uh, some of our nonprofit partners like meta that i shared that helps uh, writing business plans they have a women entrepreneurship grant of five thousand dollars so sometimes if you work with some of these other organizations, um, nonprofit organizations, like um, the workshop that you're having with Into Action, I think Into Action has had some grants for some of the people that enroll in their programs. Um, but otherwise, I, I don't really know how you search for them. I think um, you can do an internet search, but you also want to be careful that you're not um, sucked into something that's not legit. I would say um, there is grants out there for nonprofit organizations. So if you're going to be a nonprofit, I think if you Google grants for nonprofits, there is, I think, a state website that has a place where you can find a lot of um, grants for nonprofit organizations. But for for profits, I haven't heard or seen a similar website like that. So I would say maybe just subscribe to our newsletter or check out some of those um, partners of ours like Meta for the Women's Entrepreneurship Fund or Into Action. Sometimes Renaissance, I believe, has had some grants too. It just depends on the funding and availability of these organizations. <clears throat> Yes, absolutely. Okay. I would agree with you. It's great to check out nonprofits in San Francisco um, for grant opportunities. Thank you so much, Martha, for your time. You're welcome. Yeah, um, of course. And thank and you, again, everyone, for joining us. Directly, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, so in my follow-up email that I'll send to everyone who's registered will include Martha's slide deck and the recording. We will also include information on how you can reach out to the Office of Small Business if you have any follow-up questions or if you want to 
make a one-on-one -on -one appointment with them to get some guidance, and you can also reach out to the library if you have any other questions. Um, thank you so much, Martha, and thank you everyone yeah. for joining us. Happy Small Business Week.